Formerly known as the Eastern Wolf, Ontario's Algonquin Wolves are facing some difficulties. Our Ontario Hubs field producer Jan Jagannathan went to have a look. This is the elusive Algonquin wolf. As its name suggests, this apex predator reigns supreme in the Algonquin Park area. This is the home of many species, but probably our most famous is this Algonquin wolf. It is smaller than a gray wolf or timber wolf, but much larger than a coyote. So this is a typical of the structure of an Algonquin wolf, and you've got these incisors which are used to capture a prey. We do have moose in the area that they are able to, to take down or scavenge if they find one dead. And then the other part of their diet is beaver. Beaver are, in the summer months, not all that easy to catch because they're in the water. In the winter, they're in the frozen lakes. But during the spring and the fall, beaver are often up on land, and that's when they can be vulnerable. Well, there are likely um, two to three hundred in the, in the immediate area around Algonquin. And we know, we know, we're aware of a few pockets of Algonquin wolves in some other areas but we don't know uh, how many of those pockets there may be and exactly how many animals there are in each one. This animal had been collared uh, early in 2016 and then uh, uh, actually disappeared uh, and we lost track of it. Brent Patterson is a leading research scientist of wolves in Ontario. Yeah, do you need help? Um, yeah, my legs. He and his team have been collaring these predators for the Ministry of Natural Resource and Forestry since 2001. In 2016, the status of the Algonquin wolf, formerly known as the Eastern wolf, was upgraded to threatened. The survival of this unique species has been the focus for the Environmental Commissioner of Ontario's office. In fact, it's the only example left of a species in Ontario which is threatened, which the ministry allows people to kill. So in uh, 2001, all hunting and trapping uh, of Wolves and coyotes was banned in, in the 40 townships surrounding Algonquin Park. So this resulted in a protected area um, of almost uh, 15,000 square kilometers. In addition to Algonquin Park in 2016, the province added three more provincial parks to the ban. Queen Elizabeth II Wildlands, Killarney and Kawartha Highlands. The ban also includes a number of townships around these parks. When a young wolf grows up, they have to leave their pack and they have to go and find a new territory, and territories are quite large, so they have to travel considerable distances. The reason the province doesn't apply an overall ban on hunting and trapping Algonquin wolves has more to do with a cousin to the canine predator. The Algonquin wolf is, is a close relative to the coyote, and although they're larger, from a distance they can look quite similar to a coyote, and it's very difficult uh, for hunters to distinguish the two, and it can be, be almost impossible for a trapper to distinguish the two. So because of this, when we apply uh, some conservation to Algonquin wolves, it also must apply, these measures must also apply to coyotes, um, and that's not always popular. Um, you know, although they're a remarkable animal in their own way, uh, coyotes often uh, find themselves in conflict with, with uh, farmers and other landowners. It's not clear how many wolves are killed each year because the ministry does not collect information from hunters on whether they've killed a wolf or a coyote. Hunters also don't have to submit samples for DNA analysis. Another major threat to Algonquin wolves uh, is, is in the form of genetic integration or gene swamping by coyotes. Uh, coyotes are very common across southern and central Ontario and so these Algonquin wolves that are living on the edges of the population or, or that disperse from, from a place like Algonquin Park and Wand Road into the surrounding areas um, are at a very high risk of, of inbreeding with coyotes and, and having their uh, genetic uh, composition essentially washed away. Why would a wolf pair up with a coyote? Well, the fewer wolves there are, the more the chances they will need to pair up with coyotes if they can't find members of their own species. The commissioner is calling for a simple solution to a much more complicated issue. If the province can't find a way to distinguish the animals, then just killing them because we can't tell is like just shooting in the woods because you're not sure if it's a person or a deer. It's been a long-standing tradition to howl with the wolves at Algonquin Park. Since 1963, more than 150,000 people have taken part. And the wardens howl, and the wolves howl back. And the babies, the babies yip, and the adults howl. And you're part of this primeval means of communication that has existed in the world 
for hundreds of thousands of years, and just for a moment, we get a privileged glimpse into it. A chance for people to hear truly wild wolves is something that's really quite special. And, and for a lot of people, it might be the only time in, that they ever get to hear you know, a, a wild wolf howling. It, it's pretty special. Despite the concerns, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry says the unique species is more protected now than it has ever been. Whether or not it continues to grow or how much it continues to grow or expand in the future is, is another question altogether. But in terms of the security and the viability of the population we have now, uh, I, I think it's quite safe. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. Helping businesses stay on the right side of change with strategic thinking, insightful decisions, and business leadership. Are you on the right side of change? Ask an Ontario CPA.